Hey there, I'm Jess, and for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a trendy circle bag, which has lots of style and can be customized with fabrics and hardwares to fit your personal style. If you're new to sewing and our channel, welcome, I'm so excited that you're here. If this will be one of your first projects, our tutorials, we guide you step by step through the project, so I'll be here to show you the entire process. So feel free to pause the video as we go along so you can sew along with me. And if you have been a Sally Tomato fan, welcome back to our channel. I hope you enjoy this project. For today's tutorial, I'll be using my pattern named Daisy. This bag can be made casual or glamorous depending on the fabric and hardware choices. This bag features piping, a recessed zipper closure, adjustable crossbody strap, and optional metal handles. We offer two styles of metal handles on our website, but you can choose to sew this bag without them if you prefer a more casual look. This bag also has a unique construction method, so that way it's fully lined, but it's very easy to assemble, avoiding using any binding. As you may know, I'm a huge fan of classic movies, and the name and design of this pattern was inspired by The Great Gatsby, which happens to be one of my all-time favorite novels and movies. You can find the pattern and all the supplies to make this project on our website, sallytomato.com, or you can request them at your local quilt shop. The supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern, including a list of helpful motions. As always, we encourage you to support your local shop and purchase the pattern and supplies through them. If they don't have what you need, you can always let them know that they can request to purchase it through Sally Tomato, so that way you can have Sally Tomato in your local store. So gather your pattern and supplies and cut out the pieces that you need according to your pattern. If you are brand new to sewing, I encourage you to check out our Learn to Sew series for lots of tips on using your sewing machine selecting fabrics, and cutting them out for your pattern. If you're ready, gather all of your supplies and let's head on over to the work table and get started. Before you begin, make sure to review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Also, as you cut your pieces according to the pattern, it may be helpful to label them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. This pattern includes cutting layouts, so make sure to review those for the best use of your fabric. You will need to select a main fabric to use for the recessed zipper, gusset, exterior, and facing. Your lining fabric will be used for the zipper tab, the gusset, and your two lining pieces. You'll also need a contrast fabric, which needs to be a fabric that is non-woven, such as faux leather or cork fabric. Your contrast fabric will be used for the strap connector and also your strap. I've also included instructions if you want to use a woven fabric for your contrast. So pay attention to when you're cutting out your fabrics and following along with the pattern. You'll need some interfacing. I recommend a lightweight woven interfacing for this project and also foam stabilizer. For this project, you'll also need some bias tape piping. I'm just using a package of pre-made piping, but you can certainly find a tutorial online on how to make your own piping if there's a certain color or print that you want. You'll also need a zipper that has a nylon coil. I recommend trying using Sally Tomato Zippers by the Yard. They have a metallic finish, which appears to be metal, but it's actually nylon, so you can cut and sew through the zipper. You'll also need some basic hardware pieces, three quarter inch swivel hooks, slider buckle, and D-rings. And this pattern includes the option to add metal handles. So I'll show you two options, including arch metal purse handles and round metal purse handles. Otherwise, if you don't want to add those to your bag, you can certainly leave the bag as is and not add the metal handles. The first step is to fuse the interfacing to the coordinating pieces. So you want to center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating main fabric gusset, main fabric exterior pieces, and main fabric facing. You'll also want to center and fuse one recess zipper interfacing to each recess zipper piece out of your main fabric. I've already went ahead and fused all my interfacing, including the recess zipper, so make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the type of interfacing that you're using. If you're using a non-woven fabric for your contrast, such as cork or faux leather, then you can skip ahead to the next section of this video. 
However, if you're using a woven fabric such as cotton or canvas, you'll want to center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating contrast pieces for your strap connector and your adjustable strap. Next, we'll attach the foam to the exterior. With right sides up, position one of your main fabric exterior pieces over each of your foam exterior pieces. Make sure you line all edges and you can use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together. Next, at the machine, we'll top stitch a quarter inch from all edges. Next, I'll show you how to attach piping. You'll want to use a zipper foot or narrow foot or piping foot, so attach that to your machine before beginning. With right sides together, align the raw edges of the piping around the raw edge of each exterior piece. You'll want to leave a tail at the beginning and end about two inches long. Start sewing two inches from the tail end of the piping. Since we're just basting the piping down in place right now, it's okay to use a quarter inch seam allowance or just stitch as close as possible to the stitch line on the piping. As you reach the other end, you'll stop sewing two inches from where you started. Next, you can use your favorite method for joining the ends of the piping or you can follow my method in the next steps. Fold back the piping where you started and trim the tail end of the piping flush with your starting point. Then unfold the beginning end of the piping and use a seam ripper to remove the stitching from the beginning end and expose the cord inside the piping. Trim the cord flush with your starting point. Next, fold the short raw end of the beginning end to the wrong side and insert the tail end in between the folded edge to join the two pieces. You can use some pins or sewing clips to arrange the piping in place and make sure that the raw edges are aligned. Then you can continue sewing to attach the rest of the piping. I've already went ahead and prepared the recess zipper for this pattern. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step video tutorial, search on our YouTube channel for how to prepare a recess zipper. The steps in the tutorial are exactly the same, so follow along with the video, but make sure you refer back to the daisy pattern for the measurements and seam allowance. The next step is to prepare the lining. Remove the zipper pull from the zipper tape by sliding it off the unsewn end. If you're using a zipper with a metal stop, you'll need to trim about a quarter inch of the tail end of the zipper off to remove the metal stop. Next, with right sides up, center one half of the assembled recessed zipper along the top straight edge of one of your lining pieces. Make sure that your zipper coil is facing up and you have the raw edges of the fabrics aligned. Pin in place. Next, with right sides together, center one of your facing pieces along the top straight edge of your lining. Pin the layers together. You'll notice that the corners of the facing will extend past the sides of the lining to account for the seam allowance. Next, sew together along the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Press the facing away from the lining. And you'll notice that now that we've sewn the seam, the curved edges should be even. You can use a seam roller or iron to press the facing. Then top stitch the facing an eighth inch from the seam. You'll repeat the same steps to attach the remaining half of the recessed zipper and facing to the remaining lining. Also note that when you follow the instructions, the remaining recessed zipper piece tail end will be facing the opposite direction. So make sure again that your recess zipper and your lining are right side up with the coil right side up when you go to attach the remaining pieces together. Next, we're ready to assemble the main panels. Start by pinning the tail ends of the zipper against the assembled lining so they are out of the way from the side edge. With right sides together, align one lining piece with each exterior piece. Then sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance or alongside the piping. You'll want to leave about 3 inches unsewn along the bottom edge. 
Also, when you're attaching your pieces, you might want to note the top of the bag to make sure that your lining and exterior are facing the same direction. If you're using a directional print, you just want to make sure that you have them oriented correctly. Then you repeat the same step to attach the other remaining exterior and lining pieces. After sewing, cut quarter inch slits along the curved edges and this will help relax the seams for a smoother finish. Then turn each of the main panels right side out. Tuck the raw edges of the opening to the wrong side so the folds are even with the bottom curve. Use pins to hold the folds in place. And give each of the main panels a good press over at the iron. Next, we'll prepare the strap connector. I've already went ahead and marked each side of piece D according to the pattern. So you'll measure in from each length side and also down from each short side. And then you'll draw a diagonal line between the nearest marks. Then we'll cut along the lines to taper the ends. So by tapering the ends, we'll be reducing some bulk and later on conceal the raw end of the connector with a professional finish. Next, we're going to fold each length side of the connector to the center with wrong sides together. You can use sewing clips, basting tape, or basting spray if you're using a non-woven fabric, or you could press with your iron or use pins for woven fabrics. Next, thread each end through one D-ring and fold each end to the wrong side according to the pattern. Use a sewing clip to hold the fold. The next step is to assemble the gusset. Press each short end of main piece gusset and lining piece gusset to the wrong side according to the pattern. Then with right sides up, center the assembled strap connector over the main fabric gusset. I recommend to apply some basting tape to the back side of the strap connector, then position over the gusset to hold it in place. Next, top stitch the strap connector in place an eighth inch from each length side and about a half inch from the hardware. Next, with right sides together, align all edges of the main fabric gusset with the lining gusset. Use some sewing clips to hold the edges together. Then sew together along each length side with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Turn the assembled gusset right side out and insert the foam in between the wrong sides. Then top stitch each short edge closed with an eighth inch seam allowance. Make sure to move the D-rings out of the way as you sew. Now we're ready to assemble the bag. Fold each assembled gusset and each assembled main panel in half and mark the bottom center. Next, with lining fabrics together, match the bottom center of the gusset with the bottom center of one main panel. Then align the long edges of the gusset up the curved sides. You can use clips or pins to hold the layers together. Make sure that the piping extends past the gusset. Also make sure that the gusset is about the same distance from the recessed zipper on each side. Sew together with an eighth inch seam allowance continuing around the top edge. Try your best to keep an even seam allowance from the piping so it looks like top stitching from the front and seals that turning hole. After attaching the gusset to one main panel, you'll repeat to attach the opposite side of the gusset to the remaining main panel. The next section of instructions is to make and attach the zipper tab. I've already went ahead and attached the tab to the end of my zipper. You can visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on how to add a fabric tab to the end of your zipper or you could even use our zipper cord ends to have a metal zipper stop attached to the end. If you're using a metal zipper, you'll definitely want to use the metal cord ends because you cannot sew over the metal zipper. The next step is to make the crossbody strap. Again, I've already gone ahead and created our crossbody strap. 
If you're using cork fabric or faux leather, we have a video tutorial on our YouTube channel with tips and all the steps on how to make the crossbody strap. So if you would like to see that, visit our YouTube channel. Otherwise, follow the instructions included in the pattern. The last section of instructions is optional if you'd like to attach metal purse handles. If you do not want to attach metal purse handles, then your bag is complete. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you are going to install metal purse handles, on the wrong side of each main panel, you're going to mark the top center and also mark a horizontal line down from the top edge to mark the placement for the handles. You'll insert one handle centered along the horizontal line and I encourage you to visit our YouTube channel for tips on installing both styles of metal handles. We have a separate tutorial for the arch handles and also for the round metal handles. Congratulations on finishing your project if you've been sewing along with me. I had a lot of fun showing you how to make this bag and I truly hope that you enjoy using your new daisy bag. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer them. We would love to see photos of your completed project. Show off your finished bag and tag us using hashtag Sally Tomato on social media. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Have a creative day.